All right, y'all, welcome back. Working on a 2015 Kawasaki Terex 4 800, which is really a 783cc motor. Uh, we're replacing the bevel gear, which in our previous videos, there's probably about seven or eight of them now. Uh, we've talked about, that's the bevel gear right in there. That is the gear that actually turns your front and rear drive shaft or your, the shaft, the output shafts front and rear. Uh, a lot of videos on this. We've been doing a uh, engine teardown. Unfortunately, to get to that bevel gear and bearing, you have to actually disassemble the entire motor all the way down to what you see here. We've split the case. And you see there's your pistons and your crankshaft there. Over on this side of the engine block is your transmission and gears here. So, previous video, uh, we had two parts of actually splitting the case in half and getting to all this nonsense right here. So what we're gonna do tonight, we're gonna remove a couple of items and actually see if we can get that gear chunk out of this engine case and uh, see if it's either A, a bad bearing causing the slack or if maybe the nut has backed off, the retaining nut causing slack. Either case, we do have quite a bit of slack that I could tell. And uh, just to get to this flange here to unbolt this six uh, bolt flange for your output shafts, you don't even have to disassemble the motor. You can take the motor out or not even take it out and remove that uh, that flange that actually holds your uh, output shaft in place. And that shaft goes from front to rear. That's it right there. It goes all the way through. But anyway, you can remove that, I believe, while the engine's still inside the Terex. And then maybe get your hand up in there and see if you can feel slack on that on this gear right here. That one right yonder. So, Anyway, and that's a, the irony of it. You can see the slack, you can see it, but you gotta take all this stuff apart. I mean, you gotta take apart, take the cylinders off or jugs, you gotta take the heads, valve covers, the timing chain, naturally you gotta split the case, the clutch pieces, everything has to come apart. So what we're fixing to do now, we got a little C-clip retaining this uh, gear here, which is your, I would call it your bevel gear sprocket i guess anyway we're gonna start taking this off and see what we come up with because like i say it could either be faulty bearing that has worn prematurely causing excess slack or uh, like i say the, the nut that i've actually read where the nut can back off on the end of this bevel gear shaft so real quick well, i've talked about it before the reason i determined the bevel gear to be at fault uh, when you're in forward under throttle, under acceleration, you don't hear anything, but as soon as you let off the gas, the machine makes a loud uh, uh, whining or roaring sound. Uh, reverse is opposite. Under throttle and reverse, you know, with the pedal down, it makes a noise, but when you let off the gas and coast, it doesn't make the noise. Uh, it's real similar to an automobile on a differential when, it ha when you start having gear, uh, ring and pinion issues or excessive play. You'll get that loud howling or whining noise, and that's what I had. Uh, you could feel the slack on my drive shaft even on that uh, the rear output shaft, because this is the rear of the motor here. Um, you could feel it there. Anyway, so let's get to work. I'm ready to get this thing put back together and back on the, the trail, I guess you'd say, not the road, because it's been far too long. I actually rode with this machine like this for probably a year. Actually, let me get some, get some more safety glasses on here. And uh, six months to a year, I don't remember with it doing that, and I finally decided before I screw something up badly, because if this, well, that's what I wasn't trying to do. But anyway, if this, uh, if that bearing or that gear gets too loose, you got a lot of close fit here you're liable to cause these gears to mesh improperly and you could grenade the whole the whole transmission, possibly breaking the engine block, which would be a catastrophic failure. And I'm sure Kawasaki wants a pretty decent penny for that thing. There's that C-clip there. All right, so that's off. Ooh, that had some slack big time. Now this gear right here is loose, This this one Will actually pop off so I need to be careful all right lay it down now let's see 
Oh, Lord. Can y'all see that? That is terrible. Terrible, terrible. And to me, without pulling it apart any further, I'm going to say the nut backed off. Because I can see thread. If you look, I don't know if you can see under there. Right in that gap there, I can see thread. Because this, this piece right here, I don't know what you'd call it, spanner nut, something like that. Flange nut, but that is that is terrible. I'm betting the bearings are intact and I'm thinking the nut backed off. Because like I say, I've read both on the Terex forum. I've actually read about both issues. <sighs> That's gonna piss me off with the damn this damn motor must have been put together on a Friday evening or a by God Monday morning. If that damn nut backed off. See, I was going to blame if it was a, if it was the bearing. I was going to say they, they went with a lower bid on the bearings or they had a bad batch of metal. So let's take this flange off here. Well, at least I'm a pretty much 100% confirmed now that that is the issue with the noise and whatnot. Like I say, to reaffirm this damn engine did not, this, this, this Terex 4 did not ever let me down. Matter of fact, it's last trip, uh, went out to Sabine ATV Park in Texas. I'd had enough of the noise and I figured as time it got pulled down and stopped getting used. And that was shit probably six months to a year ago. And uh, finally had time to do this. Recently got married and all that, so doing the marriage, the whole for planning for a, a wedding and all that. But anyway, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop. All right. So this is your chunk, and also you're gonna have a shim right here. Uh, I don't know if y'all could see when I was messing with those that that output shaft earlier. You also have a shim on it. So you'll have a shim to, to adjust your pinion gear in and out. Of course, like I say, it's going to be tight. And looking at it again, I'm really, really thinking... I'm really thinking that it's the nut. I don't think it's the bearings. Yeah, look at all that slack both sides. Definitely the nut has loosened up. So I'm going to have to figure out what's caused that to loosen. You know, I'm unsure at this point. Um... One thing, anyway, back to the shims. So you have different shim thicknesses to, to determine how far this bevel gear goes in and out that way. And then over here, your ring gear that's on the output shafts, you'll have a shim on this side right here that goes on that flange. And that'll basically determine um, how far in and out the the ring gear will go there so you got to get that right the what they call the backlash on the gear i believe and if you don't get that right even with this bearing being tightened up you could still wind up having some uh, howling and just nasty nasty noise so anyway if y'all can see it might be hard to tell but this the teeth on this gear are very galled looking. You can tell where it's been, and it's sharp. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah, that's not good. Sharp in a lot of places, so, you know, I don't know. The bad part is, hopefully we hadn't got any trash in the motor. It don't, it, the engine oil didn't look too bad, but, I'm probably going to go ahead and while I got it down this far, I'll probably re-ring it. Yeah, that's got a lot of burrs right there on that edge. I'll probably go ahead and re-ring it, the pistons and whatnot. Of course, I'm going to change the head gaskets. All the all the appropriate gaskets will get changed out with this. Um, that's a good, I don't know if y'all can see that. I wish you could see right, right here. No, right on that one. That's kind of a good angle. Yeah, that's not supposed to look like that. Oh, man. 
That's crazy. So anyway, talked in another video. Buggy has about 25, 24, 2500 miles on it. I don't know how many hours. I bought it new in 2015, April of 2015. Been a damn good machine. Just one of them things. But it didn't get towed back to camp by no Polaris. I can tell you that. Matter of fact, it's towed many of Polaris machines back to camp, even with the bad bevel gear and bearing. Note that, Polaris drivers. I better quit talking shit because I got a damn, damn near brand new KRX sitting out there that's liable to that'll take, a, take a crap on me. And then Polaris be dragging my butt back to camp. I won't let it happen. Yeah, I'll push it back before I did that. No, nah, I'm just kidding. They're all good machines. They all got their issues, though. We'll see. We got a variety in this garage. We got some Hondas. Got a Rancher over there. Got a Foreman there. Got another Team Green Kawasaki. Of course, can't forget about the Terex there. Anyway, um, so as far as the... The engine, all these videos I've done, this is it. We're down to the nitty gritty. Uh, I'll probably go ahead and most likely make some videos of this thing, putting it back together. And uh, maybe even set up a video trying to do the backlash. I gotta learn that myself though. But anyway, that's it. I appreciate y'all watching. Please, if you would, subscribe or at least like the video. Uh, y'all take care. Thanks for watching. Bye.